My name is Ian, I'm a producer for Texas Cigar Roadshow. And I'm David, I'm a Texan, and I love cigars. This is Pit Stop. Welcome back to Texas Cigar Roadshow Pit Stop. We're so glad you could be with us here at Tobacco Cabana Definitely. in Cedar Hill. Um, huge thanks as always to Steven, Rhonda, Bob, and David for having us out and for showing us some of the finest hospitality that Texas has to offer. Um, we've got Noel Rojas on the show today. Uh, in case you couldn't tell. Yeah, really. Uh, <laughs> we're, it's no secret we're big fans of his. And uh, First we're, show. First show that kicked off Texas Cigar Roadshow, right? First show, uh, and uh, yeah, it's no, we're, we're, we're huge fans. So without further ado, we're gonna welcome Noel Rojas. The man, the Thank man. Thank you for uh, for being here, sir. Yeah. Round of applause. Yeah, uh, definitely. Studio audience. Good to see you, bro. Good to see you, bro. Pleasure to be here. Thank you, thank you. Have a seat. Freaking, uh, yeah. So yeah, I like that coffee, coffee mug, the, man. Uh, yeah. Texas Roadshow Cups <laughs> for sale very soon. So that All right. Well, cool. So, I mean, we've got an incredible, I, I, I've got your blue bonnet hat. And then uh, these are brand new that I just, you just brought in, the KSG hats. There's a lot of swag here to yeah. look at. KSG, king of small. Gauge. Gauge, yeah. right? Because that's what it is. You're all about size, right? That's correct. That size is matters. That <laughs> is right. I know it. And so. Small ring gauge small, only. Small ring that's gauge. That's correct. Right. Well, I mean, because I was always, you know, when we talked before, I was, I, I started getting more into the Lancero and the Coronas and the smaller sizes because that flavor just comes through so much more. And so you really, you're really taking that, I mean, to a, a whole nother level. With, exactly. It, with yeah. with your, I mean, that's what you're, you don't go above 50? 50 gauge on the Rojas line. Yeah. And so that really matters to you on, I mean, just the way your cigars are going to smoke and taste and, 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 and people are going to be able to experience your, your tobacco, right? That's correct. And so, I mean, a lot of great cigars out there, big range gaze guys. I know that like that stuff, sure. but I think after I've gone through all those before and I come around, Lancero and Corona, Corona Gorda, those are my go-to sizes now. Uh, I just love them. And so speaking of uh, Lanceros, I see three of them sitting there. The KSG, which I, believe it or not, I have not smoked yet. I've got two of them sitting in my humidor and I have not smoked the KSG yet. I don't know why I'm saving it. Mm. Don't ask me why. But it's like I, you know, I smoked the uh, blue bonnet and the uh, the uh, statement. Good things come to those who wait. David. <laughs> so why don't we why don't we light these up first? Just all right. Light it up. Yeah. All right. So I've got I do like on a Lancero. Uh, Ian did get me uh, the the last time on the show with the uh, V cut. Yes. Uh, saying that I should experience it more. When I do a Lancero, I do a V cut. It's pretty I, good. It's I just a pretty good uh, choice in my. I opinion. think it just it looks good, for one thing. Well, and, that's important. And I, I just like the way uh, it draws a little bit better on a uh, on a Lancero. What about you? You uh, you a punch well, guy or? In this case, you know, it's like a little pigtail. I just clip it with okay. my fingers. You know what? I'm going to do the same thing. Uh, <laughs> I mean, one of the other shows, you, you were giving me a little grief because uh, there you go. Like the whole thing about the pigtails that you can just tear now off. try to draw. Well, it's a little, uh, it's a little tight because of the close foot, yeah, right? Yeah, the close foot, yeah. Yeah. But once I mean, you good, up, it's perfect. Open. Yeah, perfect draw. Yeah. And that's the, that's the one thing about his cigars. Uh, he, I mean, huge on making sure that these things draw correctly. I had, I had one of Pass your cigars. Uh, Noel, I had one of your cigars out. Uh, it was at uh, the Ash, another. Uh, another shop uh, where we shot. I, yeah, I was, your, your house blend. His was, house blend is I yours. I was outside. Wind blowing, hmm. I lit that cigar. It stayed lit in the wind for an hour and a half, uh, all the way through. It, your uh, the construction on uh, on your sticks is excellent. Thank you. Yeah, that's that's one thing, and and that that matters a bunch when when you're smoking a cigar and you can just enjoy it rather than trying to keep it lit uh, or you're, you're not getting a good draw, um, that matters a, a, a ton 
on being able to just focus on it. And, and, and that's what I, you know, when I have a new cigar, like this one is new to me, a little peppery, I'm getting a little pepper on the backside on this one right now. So uh, being this is Nicaraguan, what are we looking at as far as the uh, binder filler wrapper here? It's a Nicaraguan filler and binder with uh, Ecuadorian uh, Habano wrapper. Okay. Uh, when I say Habano, it's the variety, but based on the priming, which is a high priming on the plant, it's a Maduro wrapper. Okay. Yeah. Maduro. Okay. <clears throat> All right. And then, I mean, yeah, so a little bit pepper on my lips. I'm getting yep. there. So that's a, to me, I think that, isn't that a kind of a traditional thing with Nicaraguan? Or yeah, is that a regional? Uh, no, it's really what happened is uh, the way that most of the cigars are made, you have the tobacco plant, uh, you know, the tobacco leaf, mm -hmm. and as you build the cigar, all the tips of the leaf, you know, head to the uh, foot of the cigar. Okay. And then the back of the leaf is, you know, over here. Okay. Now, during the process of uh, fermentation, um, the tobacco get wet, you know, they, uh, I don't know how you would you say that, but you know, you, you take the water out mm -hmm. physically. Okay. And um, during this process, uh, in my opinion, you know, there's uh, some of the, what I call the meat of the tobacco. Okay. That just concentrates more on the tip of the uh, tobacco block. Okay. The the, where the foot is. Yeah, where the foot is. Okay. Also, because it's, um, it's the, it's the part of the plant that actually gets more of the sun when it heats the plant. You know, you have a regular leaf here and then there's another here. So this one might be uh, kind of shadowing uh, the one under, but still the tips are getting a lot of sun. Okay. I so gotcha. you, know, you, you get a lot of uh, meat on the, on okay. the, on the tip okay. of, the, of the tobacco leaf. Okay. Um, you mean it's going to be stronger? Yes. Yep. Yes. In most of the cases, that's, that's the thing. And then as you, you burn the first inch, you know, it kind of smooth it out. Uh, actually, one of the techniques we use with some tobaccos is that some tobaccos are placed uh, in the cigar, starting from the center to the bottom, using the first half of the leaf. And then the, the back part of the leaf, we put it up front so that the cigar changes. Okay, all right, so you're getting a, the process. a stronger up front and then it kind of evens out. Smooth it out and then pick up again. Picks up again, okay. Yeah, because uh, it might happen that, for, for example, sometimes you smoke cigars, mm -hmm. and as you get to the last inch, it just gets really bored, and mm -hmm. there's almost no flavor. That's because, you know, you're smoking the part of the tobacco leaf that is a stick to the plant. Okay. It doesn't really get too much sun. Okay, okay, I got you. You know what I mean? Yeah. So if you, which is oh, what we do almost in every cigar we do, unless it's a very short cigar, um, I try to place the leaves on ways that the cigar actually changes through the mm. process. Mm. Um, wow. So, yeah, I mean, <laughs> that's that's some knowledge that I, I didn't have before about uh, trying to change that cigar while you're while you're smoking it. When we did our first episode, uh, you you gave us uh, you gave us a bit of a, a tasting experience where you were r rolling individual leaves for us, and it was it was it was watching a. It was like watching a mad scientist paint a Picasso. I mean, it was uh, there was just such art and passion uh, that I don't think I'd ever right. witnessed. Right, and, and, and I remember when we did that, you rolled a leaf for you. Say, here, try this, and then you rolled that leaf with another leaf. Now try it again, and it was like, wow, <laughs> totally different. Yeah, You're getting totally different flavors. Yeah. So mentioning that with single leaves, the thing that I mean guys in so many different Facebook groups and lounges are talking about is this kit right here yeah. that you've come out with. We were a part of that with the underground. I was there, Joel and I were there uh, when uh, you were kind of breaking it out. You first introduced the blue bonnet that day and you were kind of breaking this out saying, hey guys, what do you think? And everybody was just thinking this is gonna be a fantastic idea. Now, what I'm seeing here is, this is a, comp I mean, you've now honed this down to exactly what you want it to be, right? Exactly. Yeah. yeah. I mean, this is gorgeous. <clears throat> this case is just gorgeous. 
So this is not a box, just a regular box of cigars. This is a, uh, tell us what this is. Yeah, what do, this gorgeous this, get box this is in front of out us. of the way so he can uh, have Absolutely. access to the, yes. And we'll, okay. we'll, let's get into these, yeah. get into this. Okay, let me first kind of explain, you know, even before we go to the physical project, you know, what is the meaning or the purpose of this particular box? Yeah. Um, there's something that I wanted to ask you. Okay. What would you consider yourself? A cigar specialist or a cigar connoisseur? I, I am, I'm a more of a, I'm a connoisseur. I'm not a specialist. I'm definitely not a specialist. What, what I'm below you? him. I'm, a, I'm an amateur. <laughs> <laughs> what, what would you say is the difference between a specialist and a connoisseur? I think a connoisseur is somebody that's very interested in cigars, loves cigars. Um, they, they probably know what they like to smoke. They don't know why. A lot of times, I know I like Nicaraguan tobacco. I know I like that. That's for one thing. Uh, just because I know other regions and I'm you know, talking to you, learning some things like that. A specialist then is somebody who is then going to be able to tell you things about what they're tasting in that cigar, which I'm not at that level. I did, when I did that tasting with you and we got around to the Jalapa, it was like, wow. I found out I like Jalapa because it's a sweet, it's got that sweet taste to yeah. it. And so I'd never singled out Jalapa before and then boom, found out that I was only tasting that tobacco. So Now where's Jalapa? Is that a, from a particular region? Yes, it's a region that is uh, is higher on altitude than Esteli. Mm -hmm. So like Still coffee, in Nicaragua? Yeah, still in Nicaragua, close to the border with Honduras. And like coffee, you know, as you go high on altitude, you lose the acidity and you get more sweetness and more creaminess. Mm -hmm. uh, it's kind of the same thing. Yeah. Yeah, we kind of mentioned that on our other episode with uh, Matthias in how that uh, his coffee was not very acidic because he was Matthias using. Matthias from uh, Libertas Coffee. Yes. Check that episode out yeah. if you haven't. And that, and so there's the same thing with uh, and how coffees and and tobacco can be grown in a lot of the same ways, and you're looking for a lot of the same things, what exactly. you're talking with taste, exactly. which you're, you're, you were born in Cuba. Yes, cool. Yeah. yeah, and so coffee man, coffee and cigars go together. Yeah, definitely, yes. that's what I always drink. <laughs> yes. Um, so, going back to what is the purpose of this and why I decided to do this. Uh, when, when, you know, when, when I first came to the state and I started making cigars, down there in Nicaragua. One thing is knowing how to make cigars, another thing is knowing what the market really needs or wants. Okay. And that's something that I have to understand and learn myself for the last four or five years. And it cost me, you know, when you make mistakes, it cost me to learn, right. you know, what really I needed to do. Right. But uh, there was, I would say, two or three things that I noticed that it was a big issue for the consumer, for the regular consumer. Mm. That was something normal for me because I was born in tobacco fields per se in Cuba. Uh, but it's difficult. It was something difficult for the consumer. Number one is information about cigars. Mm -hmm. You know, because most of the time when you Google or uh, you go to YouTube pages and you want to know about cigars and learn about cigars, there's a couple of companies that put out some videos. But I would say probably 80 percent of the content of these videos is just them telling you how good their cigars is. Mm -hmm. It's a sales how, pitch. Yeah, and how yeah. much do you need to buy it. Yeah. Uh, my approach is different. I just want to create consumers that are well educated into cigars, mm -hmm. that, that have the ability to actually by themselves take decisions based on the knowledge that they will get. Mm -hmm. That knowledge is the one that, I mean like rolling cigars, when I have been here rolling cigars in the stores, and some people that have been smoking a cigar for 10 years walk in and said, what is that? So that's tobacco. And what are you making? I'm making cigars. I didn't know cigars were made like this. You know, what? I didn't know cigars were handmade. You know, things like that really pop up my attention. I say, so I need to really create a way for the consumers for the first time to be able, number one, to learn, not pitching a particular product or saying, mm -hmm. you know, buy this or that. Just giving them knowledge, mm -hmm. creating a better understanding, more sophisticated consumer. And number two, they won't need to go to Nicaragua or Dominican Republic or Cuba or any factory to actually go through the process like a master roller or a master blender would go when making a blend. Mm -hmm. That's why I came out with this particular product. Yeah, and you were, I think one of the things that you had mentioned before when we were talking, when we were at the uh, underground, um, was that 
if you go through this and you learn how to be a specialist through, through what you're presenting here, if you do go to a factory, you're gonna have a huge head start on learning something more rather than trying to concentrate on you know the the tobacco it's tasting. not going to be so overwhelming yeah yeah it won't be all oh yes yes yeah the whole plan with this we're going to have uh, we're counting on five volumes uh, but I, yeah i noticed that yeah. this is volume 1 of 5 yeah yeah we're going to we're going to have tobaccos from all over the world oh wow wow, wow. because the thing is uh, as i said you know uh, my question in my mind the question was how can i help the consumer to make better purchase decisions when I'm buying cigars. Mm -hmm. They buy my cigars or anybody's cigar, right? Right, right. And then, you know, I think the problem is that consumers have been smoking cigars uh, since, you know, forever uh, that are already blended. So just, just like a metaphor for you guys to understand out there. You know, think about a cappuccino. You mm -hmm. have been drinking, ca imagine that you have been drinking cappuccinos since you were a kid. Uh, just the cappuccino by itself. Mm -hmm. You have you haven't tasted the sugar, you haven't tasted the milk, you haven't tasted the uh, coffee, espresso. You're tasting the final product yeah. without the knowing what the ingredients exactly. are. Exactly. So how do you really know how much you like the milk or you like the coffee or you like the sugar? Yeah. You know that's the thing because you haven't tried it independently by yourself. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Now I'm presenting you with a product that you can actually taste your palate as you were a kid and you taste your palate how different things taste like. For the first time, you're gonna taste jalapa, mm -hmm. and your your brain is gonna say, "This is how jalapa tastes like." Damn, I like this. Now I'm gonna look for cigars that has jalapa in. Mm -hmm. Or I'm gonna, uh, you know, I, like you guys have told me, I can just smoke this by itself. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. Those little those little sticks that are in. So take this. Take. Let, I mean, let's get to that. Let's see what we're looking at inside here. So these little completed. That is beautiful. Com yeah. I mean, it's just gorgeous. The the whole layout of your box. The map, I love it. <clears throat> this this sheet here with the frost. Did you create this map? This looks like a, I did. This looks like a custom map. I did. That is gorgeous. So we've got a map, and then this is telling you what's in in, in each of these here. Exactly. You know, like a, like a chocolate cookie. It's a yeah. Russell Stover's yeah. for cigars. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. So this is, this, that will be the best approach. Valentine's, Valentine's Day gift uh, <laughs> idea. <laughs> so we have, on this particular box, we have, well, first I map out different regions of Nicaragua where tobacco is grown. We have Somoto, we have Jalapa, we have Esteli, we have Condega is here in the center. We have uh, Ometepe, the island of Ometepe. This is one of those tobaccos that I can just smoke it by itself. Mm -hmm. Because it's like a straight, a straight strong shot of uh, mm, uh, espresso? espresso with a lot of sugar, like a Cuban coffee. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh yeah, Something those, like that, those you know? little cups of Cuban, you yeah. Get, you know, there's some complexity, it's not super complex, but it's one of those tobaccos that the flavor is just 100%, mm -hmm. the intense intensity of the flavor. Okay. Um, and then, well, this is, you know, Nicaragua. Uh, I map how here on on this uh, paper, uh, the different primings and the different seed wood that we're using. And, and this particular uh, box, we're only right. using uh, Criollo seed. Okay. Now, what are oh, Criollo yeah. seeds? Well, there is two main uh, varieties of tobacco for fillers. Uh, it's Criollo and Corojo. There is a lot of variations of this. I love saying Criollo. Criollo. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but Criollo, it's, uh, it's a tobacco that it has more uh, nicotine content, it's more strong, it's more spicy, it's more peppery. Okay. Um, it's, it's a very rich uh, flavor on okay. the Criollos. Uh, on the other hand, uh, Corojos are more smooth, sweet, creamy. Uh, you get a lot of honey, Aroma, mm -hmm. you know, when you smell it, that it's you know well fermented, well aged. Mm, okay, okay. Uh, it's super sweet. Uh, the combination of those two make terrific cigars. Mm. Um, but the Criollo is, is just a different, a different uh, variety of tobacco, a different seed of tobacco. Okay. And that's you know I wanted to use one type of seed at the time because there is probably a thousand variations of uh, genetics uh, mixes between Corojo and Criollo, Criollo and Habanos, and you know there is a lot of them. Wow. This is a 100% Criollo. And then I have the three different primings. Uh, as you can see here on the, uh, and on the next box I'm gonna have that. That's one thing that I miss. It's uh, naming the different primings on the tobacco plant. You know, uh, mainly you have three different primings. 
Uh, the tobacco on the top is what is called Ligeros. All right. Tobacco on the center is called Visos. And tobacco on the bottom are called Seco. Seco, okay. And as you go, I always get those two mixed up, Vis yeah. Veso and, and Seco. I always flip those. So, so again, say that again. Ligero, I knew Ligeros Ligero, on top. Visos and Secos. Well, yeah, okay, yeah. all right. So the Secos are the lighter? Yeah, Seco is the tobacco that gets the lower amount of sun. So it doesn't grow really thick. And it doesn't have too much flavor or strength or aroma but it does help to um, uh, round or per se complete a particular blend you're trying to create okay. using tobacco from the same regions. Okay. Uh, the Visus are the most responsible for flavor. Uh, that's the tobacco that has most, most of the flavor and the strength is an average medium strength. Okay. Uh, depending on the region where the tobacco is grown, in, of course. And the, uh, the tobacco on the top is what is called Ligero. It's the strongest tobacco with the strongest amount of nicotine uh, it's, it's super rich, but the strength on the tobacco overwhelms the flavor of the of the of the leaf. If so that you, something yeah, you so said. you wouldn't want to use. You would want to be sparing on how much lihero you use. Right, right, right. Exactly. And in physical matters, uh, talking, when you make a cigar, you want to use the three different primings because lihero is too thick. Yeah. Uh, it, it burns so slower. That's the tobacco you usually put in the center of the cigar so you get a cold draw. Uh, the okay. visos go around the ligero and the secos go around the, the visos and the ligeros. So it burns like a cone, uh, giving you the slower burning on the center of the cigar so you get a cold draw instead of getting uh, hot air. Uh, like if you put the seco on the center of the cigar. Okay. Something like that, yeah. Uh, so basically, you know, that's the one thing that we're gonna put here in the next boxes. Uh, that's one thing that I missed, but there's so some So I could things. simply say, there is a whole lot more to a cigar <laughs> than just putting some tobacco together, rolling yeah. it up and lighting that baby, right? I mean, a good cigar. There's a lot of good information. <laughs> especially, especially on small ring gauges. Yeah. For uh, example, you think about this. This is a 38 gauge. Uh, that we actually use some Ligero, not too much of it, uh, just mainly because I couldn't use it based on the physical shape of the cigar. So let me rephrase that. Mm. You got a very thin cigar, you got a very thin cigar that you have to put a certain amount of tobacco with a certain amount of weight. When you have a really thick tobacco inside that you're trying to bend, and fill out that physical shape of the cigar without leaving tunnels. It wouldn't fit. Or, exactly, yeah. because it's too thick, yeah. right? It's just gonna fall and it's still gonna be wide holes inside of the cigar mm. because it, it's ligero. Right. So you have to uh, pick a specific type of ligero, that's why small rig gauges are so difficult. A specific type of ligero that have the color and the strength without having the texture of the ligero. There's some ligeros that are super thick, mm. super thick, but they don't deliver that much strength or flavor, then we have to sort, and that's the whole thing about the KSG. Uh, that's why it's a limited release. Uh, I mean, I do limited amounts of different sizes, uh, but we sort the leaves, especially the Ligero, trying to find out that leaf that have a specific texture and a specific color and a specific amount of strength and flavor to be able to put as many as we can put in that 38 gauge cigar. That's mm -hmm. why this is one one hour and 40 minutes smoke. Yeah. Um, without compromising the draw, because if you put too much seco, which is the thinner tobacco, then it compact itself and doesn't allow the, the air, the to, air to go to go through. Wow. So there's so much that goes into small <laughs> ring gauges. And that's why most of the companies don't do don't, it. The, exactly. They don't it, do it. I always hear that. It's like they're too hard to roll. Yeah. They're I mean, a regular roller could roll 250 cigars of this. And this is a really good, the best rollers that you can get. Mm -hmm. 250 cigars of this. They can during make, a, what, during a day? During an eight hour yeah. shift. Uh, cigars over 52 gauge, all the way up to 70, they can make 400 cigars a day. Hmm. You see the difference? Mm -hmm. Wow. That's counterintuitive because someone like me would just think the smaller ring gauges, because it's using less tobacco, would take less time. But it's the opposite. Yeah, especially that the way that you have to put the tobacco in there and the weight of the cigar. Yeah. Every of my rollers, they have a scale. One of those uh, you roll a scale, mm -hmm. and they have to scale every single cigar, and it can be more than 0.5 grams different between one cigar to the other. Wow. It can be. We have established a, a set uh, of, of weights mm. for sizes. Uh, every factory has their own weights. I have my own weights that I came out with. And uh, they 
you know, when they weight it, if it's one gram over, they have to roll that cigar back, unroll it, take out half leaf, which is 0.5 grams, and roll it again and make sure that cigar is at wow. least 0.5 grams over or under wow. the particular. Uh, <laughs> as good as they are, how yeah. often does that happen? When you have like a really good guy, they probably have to do that in a day six or seven times. But you will be amazed. It's pretty good. Six or seven times out of how many? 200, 250. Yeah. 250. Yeah. That's incredible. It is. Yeah. <laughs> it really it is. is. But uh, it gets to the point that you can hold the cigar in your hand and just move it and you can know how much weight that wow. cigar has. How long does it take somebody to get that kind of information or get that kind of talent? Uh, five years at yeah. least, yeah. doing it every single day. Are they apprenticing or are they actually, you just have them in there doing it? No, the people that are set to uh, check the cigars, what they call revisadores, yeah. uh, those are people that they rolled cigars before and they were really good at it, so they put it out to quality control. Now they can just pick a cigar and said, you know, this cigar is actually overweight, give me the scale. Put it there, you see? This is one or two. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. yeah, you get you get to the point like for example myself and, and, and just to prove it to some of my rollers when I'm in Nicaragua, I said, you know, when we have some issues with some cigars that are not being rolled the way that I want, I pick up a couple of cigars, just take it, touch it with my fingers. I don't have to even look at it. It's what we call and a I power said, move. <laughs> I said, this is what this cigar is gonna do. On the first inch, it's gonna burn well, and then after the first inch, for the second inch. It's going to make a tunnel. And then after that, it's going to go again back to uh, burning right. And this is because you're doing this, this, and this. And I do it in front of them. And they're like, wow. It's just, just, mm. you, get, you get the sensi uh, Laying the sensation. Laying the smack down. You, know, you, you get the feeling of your fingers. That you can just touch in the cigar. You know where it's the softest spot. That when you press the tobacco, it just uh, uh, go down more than what it usually should go. You know, mm -hmm. there's an empty spot there. Yeah. You know, and, and things like that you learn with the time. There is a lot of work in it. You so have these people are artists. Oh, it's 100%. They're absolutely artists. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. Artisans, yeah. Yeah, I mean, this, I mean each, each cigar is, is I mean, <clears throat> the ones that I, I mean, I love your bands that you've got, your artwork, the, the new, the Rojas uh, labels uh, that you've got with those. And then each cigar is a piece of art. I mean, oh, if, yeah. you know, when they, when you pick out that, that wrapper, that that is going to accentuate that that cigar that you need and 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 then you know when you like you're saying when you you get this whole thing and it it smokes the way you want it to it tastes exactly what you planned on it doing and then you've got a band and then the whole thought process that's gone into this it's a it's a piece of art yeah it is it, it's really hard i mean it's really hard and so what is so your goal with this this um kit is basically a kit well uh, <clears throat> uh, yes basically a kit basically it's a tool I would say this is mostly a tool that I'm giving to the consumer so they can teach their palate they can make better buying decisions we have these cars that they can take notes okay yeah I'm looking at this sweet yeah. sweet notes nutty notes coffee I don't see key lime pie on here <laughs> <laughs> I don't see <laughs> so but yeah I mean you're learning how, and, it, and all of these are one region. It's No, it's actually three regions. Three regions, okay, so, three regions, but all Criollo. Exactly. Okay, but three primings? Three different primings, the three different primings okay. per region. For okay. example, we have the region of uh, Esteli, which is this one up here. Okay. And then we have uh, Ligero priming, which is this. This is gonna be a cigar that's gonna be strong. Mm -hmm. Uh, peppery, it's going to be spicy, uh, you know, a lot of flavor, but a lot of strength. Too. Okay. Then you go to uh, the Viso, which is this one, more flavor, less strength. So all three of these are Ligero? Yes. All three of these are Viso? Yeah. Okay. 100% Ligero, 100% Viso, 100% Seco from Esteli. Okay. Including the Including the wrapper? So the wrapper is actually a... The wrapper's different. Uh, yes, it's different. It's um, Indonesia, Indonesian uh, wrapper. Okay, yeah. so so why three cigars? Because um, these are all Seiko. All three of these are Seiko. So why three of each one? Why, what is Maybe your reason? Maybe you've got two friends smoking mm. with you. <laughs> yes. Well, that, you know, so people can actually uh, partner it up to smoke it. Okay. Or, uh, I think, and this is just my personal belief, you have to go through uh, 
each region, each priming three times yes. in order mm. to really hold that yeah. mm. thought okay. in your brain. Wow. To okay. really teach your brain, uh, okay. your brain how, how the flavor tastes like. Okay. Uh, you know, repetition is how you learn. Right. And so how would we, what would, if I got this, so if somebody gets this kick, kit, uh, this tool, what would it look like for me when I kicked, when I got into this thing and started okay. lighting it up? What I would recommend for, uh, for you to do, it's uh, first I will start with just one region. Just one region. So we're prime. just we're just gonna go this. Yes, sir. We're just gonna go that. Yeah, because you wanna focus on what that region tastes like and teach it out to your brain. Now is this in one day? No, 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 no. <laughs> now this is something that I would recommend you to do either you know after dinner. Okay. Uh, maybe do a, you know a small uh, mouthwash or something like that just to clean out your palate a little bit. Drink some coffee, and then when you feel you have your palate okay and mm -hmm. ready to go. Then you start with one cigar per region, and you can actually taste the two regions. It's a small cigar, it's uh, four and a half by 42. Mm -hmm. So um, you can smoke, for example, the Seco, smoke the Viso, smoke the Ligero. And what period of time? That's what? Um, that probably will take you, I would say, probably two hours, one and a half hours, two hours. For all three? Yes, for three cigars. Okay. Yeah. All right, so, so, that's, so I'm just going to do this. Or just this? No, no, no. One of each priming. Cleaning your palate in between. Yeah, yeah. yeah kind of one, like one of way. each priming. So you taste the seco because this is the thing. By making notes as you're going exactly. along. Yeah. Flavor okay. profile is going to be the same per region. Okay. Now the complexity is going to be different, and the intensity of the flavor is going to be different. So you're going to have per se a base profile you know, or how tobacco from Esteli tastes like. Mm -hmm. And then it's just gonna go up in notes of the same profile as you go up in the primates. So, so would, would you start with the secos? I will start then with go, the seco, And then yeah. work up to the Ligero? I will start with the seco. Okay, yeah. so I finished dinner, I've got my palate clean, I'm good to go. I go out and I light this one up, right? Smoke through it, make some notes. Do I wait a period of time to, before I light this one up? You actually could light up the three cigars at the same time. Light them up yeah. at the same time. Put it down, you know, smoke the sickle. That's what we were doing at your shop yeah, on right. our first episode. We were kind of passing. Yeah, I mean, that passing. ashtray was so full. Every time, 15 minutes came around, he's handing us another cigar. It's like, here you go. I was like, ah, oh. put it down and go and start. And that was an experience yeah. that I feel like it's, it's, you couldn't have replicated it, but I guess now you can. Uh, because exactly. the only way we would have had that experience before is if you just happened to know Noel or somebody of his caliber, which uh, it's not gonna happen that yeah. often. But now you can you can get one of these, take it home, give it to a friend, uh, and experience this without, you know, experience this in your own home. Yeah. And then you, you wanna be able to compare. Compare between the Seco, the Viso, and the Ligero. You know, mm -hmm. what's the difference? So when you smoke a cigar that is already blended, as you smoke it, you're like, I'm picking up some notes of Ligero Esteli here. You know, I'm picking up some notes of Seco Esteli or... And then I will save, you know, one cigar of each prime in each region to the end, so you can actually taste, you know, let's say one cigar of each region, same prime in yeah. at the time, so and then go back and, notes. Yeah. You know, because that's, that's what is really gonna set the point, is when you, compare between this cigar, this region, and this priming, this cigar, this region, and this priming. So you're able to pick up notes or tobaccos when you are smoking fully blended cigar. And I'm pretty sure, I mean, once you did that with me up there, mm -hmm. after that, didn't, didn't you pick up some of oh, the yeah. notes that you actually taste there on yeah. some cigars? Yeah, yeah, definitely. That was, I can't remember exactly, you know, it's been a while since we, we've been up there yeah. and done that. Almost three years. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, but yeah, I do remember uh, just being able to remember that things stood out to me. Yeah. And that was the, the thing is when I smoke a lot of cigars, I don't know really what I'm smoking, uh, but I, I can taste something. I go, oh, okay, I like that. But this it's hard is going to have to, the vocabulary yeah. to, to put into words what you're tasting. Right. Right. Yeah. Unless you have yeah, something like that right there. That's why we have uh, the Wheel of Flavors. 
Are you going to actually take notes? Wheel of uh, flavors. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There. But, you know, that's important when you're... I used to do that a lot with my cigars when I first, you know, got into a lot of different ones, was taking notes. I'd save the band. I'd write some notes, see what I, you know, what I was tasting, uh, uh, you know, just the, the construction of it. Just make some general notes about the cigar. Mm. And, uh, and I, I learned, through that process, I learned that I like Nicaraguan tobacco um, and then it's like you kind of go down it's like okay my second favorite is this or my third favorite is you know th and, but I learned you know that I really like Nicaraguan the best yep. um, and so that so with a kit like this like Ian was saying you know we're able to get one of these in our house and be able to do this how are we getting a kit like that well the first batch was always uh, actually sold out even I couldn't eat it, literally, I couldn't sell it. Mm -hmm. uh, I just talked about some stories about the idea, and they said, you know, when you came out, I want this many boxes. Yeah. And the first batch, the first release, was sold out even before actually trying to sell it. Wow. Uh, just a few stores, about seven stores, they bought the full batch. And uh, I'm sorry for uh, the other stores that couldn't get it, but we have uh, 500 more uh, being made right now. And you know, I will be putting more out. Uh, volume so. two? No, no, volume one. Okay. So every volume is gonna come out every six months, seven months, because it's gonna take some time for the people to catch up. Sure. Now, the one thing that uh, your viewers need to know is that every box on the bottom has a, a QR code that they can actually scan it, and it's gonna take them to the YouTube channel that I have where they will be able to see the full explanation of how they should smoke wow. the cigar and okay. what this means to. And also a serial number that is going to be matched to the person that is doing the, uh, the cigar specialist. Because, I mean, we have a full certification for the people that is going to be doing this. Oh. And my plan is, uh, let's say, I mean, I can fit up to three guys per box on the certification. Let's say you guys get together. You know, right, three those three, you. okay. And, and you go through the process. Uh, when they go to my uh, YouTube channel, to the link, there's gonna be a link there that they can download a PDF file with the test. Because as they smoke the regions, they have to smoke these three cigars here, or well, four cigars. Uh, one cigar doesn't have the wrapper on it on purpose, so you can taste the independent filler and binder without the wrapper. Mm -hmm. Wrapper is up to 80% of the flavor of the cigar. Right. And these three cigars are already uh, finished with the wrapper and everything. And oh yeah, I didn't notice that. And there is this little box with two cigars made 100% wrapper. So you can actually taste the wrapper by itself. Oh, wow. So when you, uh, when you smoke this, then you have to find out which of the three regions, uh, we only use two of them, which of the three regions was actually used to make this particular blend. It's a little, um, hmm. it's like going back to school. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So uh, as you do that, uh, you fill out the, the quiz, you know, the test that I'm gonna have that they can download, put all the Is information. Is it an open book test? <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you know, as they do it, send it to the email that is gonna be on that particular paper. Uh, we will send them a certificate with their name and their friend's name if they did this uh, in groups. Okay. Uh, with a certification, you know, you're a cigar specialist level one. Very good. Uh, my goal is, you know, create, as I said, sophisticated consumers that they're not just smoking cigars in the stores, they know what they're doing, they know what they're smoking, mm. and they can actually lead other people to uh, better cigars, mm -hmm. to make better purchase decisions based on the knowledge that they will be able to get. Based on what they like. Exactly. Yeah. Um, by the end of the last volume, which should be the number five, uh, we don't know yet, but should be the number five, uh, they will get a, you know one uh, like a trophy mm -hmm. with a chaveta on it, you know, with their name, you know, okay. your certificate, you know, thank you for completing this okay. course. And, and uh, what you said there, that was the cutter. Yes. That, yeah. that, uh, that blade that he uses to cut tobacco. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's like a trophy. Yeah. And uh, when they have the time to do it, I will take these guys to Nicaragua for uh, three nights and four days. Mm. Um, Let's start this right now. <laughs> 
they will pay for flight yeah. and um, and the hotel, and we will take care of food and transportation. Mm -hmm. And what I uh, what I want to do with this cigar specialist is taking them from the process of literally physically working from the seedbed, plantation, harvest, uh, sorting of the leaf, fermentation, blending, manufacturing, packaging, everything that goes into cigar making. So they really know mm. about everything that wow. is to know into the cigars. Yeah, amazing, amazing. So real quick, Esteli and then what What were the other two regions? Uh, we have Esteli, we have Jalapa, and we have Condé on this first ballot. Okay. Yeah. Okay, very nice. And That's exciting. All, uh, that is it's it's really, right I, I mean, I mean, I love learning things about, you know, cigars, but this takes it, I mean, not just one step, this takes it several steps further yep. in uh, not just teaching your palate, um, uh, but also being knowledgeable enough to help other people too, like you're saying, getting to that point to where... And just enjoying the process, you feel like uh, you're getting, you're, you're, you're experiencing you're, you're stepping into the shoes of the of the cigar blender, mm -hmm. uh, and it's it's opening this what was previously like this mystery box, where you you, you like what you're smoking but you don't know what's inside. Exactly. And now you're 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 uh, it's like a key to unlocking this whole new world. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's it's available. Yeah, for I mean, everybody. so guys are yeah, yeah, guys are going to be able to and ladies are going to be able to. I would I mean, enjoy your cigars that much more uh -huh. because you're going to have that knowledge of w why I really like this and then be able to try to maybe venture to something a little bit different because you've gone through this and you found something else that you like, you know, as far as individual tobaccos. Did you know how much you like Peruvian tobacco? Oh, yeah, it? yeah. You know, that's the thing. Most of the people out there, they think Peruvian, um, I don't know. But when you have the opportunity to taste Peruvian by itself, mm -hmm. And then somebody tell you, well, on this plan I actually use Peruvian tobacco. I might like that. So yeah. You can make a better purchase decision. Yeah. 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 You know? Yeah. That's what I like. I mean, anything that's uh, different. Um, I mean, so, for like you're saying, somebody says Peruvian, I, my ears perk up, and I go, okay, I definitely want to try that because I know I like Peruvian tobacco. Yeah. Um, and so, and the same thing with Jalapa. They say uh, I'm using Jalapa in here. I, I know I like that, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go try that one. Yeah. And you know you like it because you've tasted it I, by itself. By itself, exactly, exactly. So where, so for the viewers that are watching this, how do they, how do they find one of these boxes? Well, uh, right now there's a few stores that has it. Uh, AME Cigars has it. Uh, oh, in Weatherford, we did our show there. And Fuego Cigars in Rockwell, uh, they can contact them. They have them. Okay. Underground sold out of those. Yeah. Um, what what doesn't they're underground they're, sell they're out of? They're difficult to get. Yeah. Uh, there's a store in California. So what Napa you're saying is brick and mortar shops. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Brick and mortar shops yes. is where you're gonna find this. This is meant for brick and mortar store. This yeah, and that's what the Texas Cigar Road Show yeah. is about, is brick and mortar. Yes, yeah, so this is in local stores. And, yeah, exactly. So I mean I love it. I love your stuff, always have. Um, and you are our first show, which is appropriate for you to come back and 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 then present you know your your new tool that you're gonna further uh, educate cigar smokers and help them enjoy their cigars even more uh, with a fantastic product that is already I mean people already enjoy these now they're gonna be able to understand why they enjoy them even more um, so I mean this is just phenomenal I can't more information wait information that I've ever gotten off of one of your shows before <laughs> and that's saying something because I get a lot of information for you yeah shows it's just stuff. I mean it's incredible I'm gonna watch this episode five times <laughs> <laughs> yeah so Noel man I just I have to say I mean thank you for for bringing this I was pleasure. totally Thanks excited to, to have this one on here I know Ian was when I told him he's like oh my gosh you mean <laughs> Noel's gonna be here yeah he's gonna be here. we get to talk to him about his kit so I know our viewers are going to be excited too about this. I've seen this kit all all around in other places. Guys are totally stoked about it. So I, I, I just have to say thank you very much, man. It's my pleasure. Again, it's oh. my pleasure. Thank you so much. My pleasure. Uh, thank you guys for watching. I uh, hope you enjoyed. Hope you enjoyed it as much as we did. Yeah. Uh, subscribe if you haven't already. Click that notification bell. And until next time, enjoy the leaf. Grow the culture. Texas Cigar Roadshow is presented by the North Texas Cigar Society.